It's been over 11 years since this base god came out in April of 2013, and still there is no successor to the throne. Anyone who has owned this headphone or followed its cult online will know that this headphone is not perfect. Specifically, the headband joint is a weak point. I can confirm this. Also, by this point in time, there are likely no more original ear pads left in existence that are in their original condition, and most headbands have also shed their skin by now. Also, the plugs are not immune to oxidation, and cables are hardwired as opposed to detachable. Other than that, it doesn't appear especially better or worse in most other regards. Comfort is about average, although headband padding is rather good for a headphone of this size and weight. Clamping force and overall mass of the headphone is not the most comfortable, and certainly not, not a headphone I would take outdoors. They are not dwarfed by other regular full-size headphones. And finally, the aesthetic design is a little above average, with some fairly elegant brushed metal yokes that hold the ear cups and provide some swivel. With the boring stuff out of the way, let's take a peek inside at what solidified the cult status of these headphones. In the front, there is a very sad-looking 30mm driver. For a headphone chamber of this size, a 30mm driver simply cannot push enough air to get a good sound. Looking at the driver itself, it also does not appear to be anything particularly special either. But let's not get too discouraged, as things are already starting to look interesting. On the rear of the cups resides the 55mm base driver. Around it is the first base chamber. It has three ports and is the first step of the double reflex system. Then on either side of the 30mm driver on the baffle there is a rubber resonance duct. This is the second step of the double reflex base system. As stated on JVC's website, this double reflex system is based on the Kelton method of subwoofer design. It does a fantastic job of isolating the bass frequencies from the full range driver and channels the sound directly to your ears. The concept is actually not new. There have been a handful of headphones in the past that used a single bass reflex to get a similar effect, albeit to a lesser extent. Among those includes the Technics RPF1 which I reviewed last year. This segment of the review needs two parts. Without any DSP, EQ or tone correction, this headphone is a stinky pile of hot garbage, but the dumpster is on fire, and it's also the end of the world. Treble is mostly a vague memory with only a narrow band still present. Midrange is horribly imbalanced. It takes the concept of the artificial soundstage tuning and turns it up about 500%. Bass is quite good, but still also very booming. Of course, this is also not quite how they sounded new because I'm using some aftermarket leather pads, but realistically, almost every owner today is using some similar variant of this earpad size, so I don't think there's any reason to make a big deal out of that. This headphone is the only headphone on earth that needs this much EQ. The result is a headphone that is also the only headphone on earth that can only be used for one very specific genre of music. Of course I'm being reductive and facetious, but for argument's sake, let's call this genre SPL Enthusiast Music. Not to spoil the surprise, but the results are spectacular. By pure coincidence, while I was preparing for this review, I was flicking through multiple genres listening to these headphones during a thunderstorm and on multiple occasions I had to take the headphones off because I couldn't tell if it was the storm or the headphone. It was always the headphone. Going back to the point about multiple genres, yeah, these headphones still suck. They can be somewhat tamed with strong EQ, but aside from the bass quality and quantity, there is nothing present that can be described as a musical performance. Everything from stage, detail, timbre, they're all at varying degrees of mediocrity and suckage. 
But going back to their one true purpose of rattling skulls and bursting eardrums, there is nothing else that can do this. Every other headphone will distort and sound horrid long before reaching this point, but the SZ2000... It feels like this is the way it is supposed to sound. EQing this headphone flat just sounds so bad. You have to keep cranking the bass higher and higher, and you keep thinking that it's going to be too much, but then you hear it and you realize it's not quite there yet. Then finally, you hit that sweet spot around 10 decibels of bass boost, and finally, the planets align. But that's not all. It can do more. A hell of a lot more. This EQ profile is only reaching the point where I think most audiophiles would think, yeah, this is a fun novelty. You can throw about double the amount of bass and experience air fluttering past your earlobes. Not that I would personally recommend it. There's not much else to say. You either want this or you don't. The SZ2000 serves a very specific niche, and I truly hope they all live long enough until they get a true high-end successor or a fair replacement. As a piece of engineering, I think JVC only got it 50% right. The concept works, but needs a huge helping hand from the user. Overall, I think the SZ2000 is incredibly stupid, just as it can be incredibly good fun. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.